God take it away. Well, thanks so much, Mike. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And today we're going over the Greater Phoenix Metro Market Stats for the week ending April 19th and, of course, the week prior. Uh, taking a look at our numbers across the board, we're sitting at 30 days closed on market. We have a 0.64 month supply, 156% absorption rate. I guess we're kind of, you know, just accept those numbers now. Uh, 734,000 average list price, 500,000, 507,000 average sale price. We haven't seen it over 500 ever. List price, the sale price sitting at 101.09%. Looking at active inventory, we have 5,558 properties uh, currently active in the MLS. Uh, pending is sitting at 59.82 and closed units is at 52.16 month to date. New listings. We took 2,326 new listings last week. That's just down just a little bit, but we're still up there in that 23, 2,400 range. That's where we need to be. Uh, days on market for active is sitting at 80 days and days on market for closed at only 30. Looking at our price ranges and what's going on there, 62.71% of our inventory is sitting under $500,000. The average is uh, running at about 37 days on market, but you can see certain price ranges in there. You'll see that there's some that are even brisker and some that are uh, obviously uh, take a little longer to sell. Our 500 to a million dollar price range represent 23% of our inventory, closing at about 47 days on market. Um, and again, you can see the number of units in each of these categories have, has continued to go up. Uh, and obviously, we have a lot of people coming from California, so that is the market they're interested in. Um, and not to mention the million dollar and up market. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago and, and how volatile that is. That's sitting at 14% of the entire inventory at 108 days. So looking at our spreadsheets, uh, for those of you new with us, uh, I always give a quick rundown down the center aisle. There is a uh, salmon color or light pink color. That's last year, same week. And then the two columns to the left represent this most p current seven-day period and then the, week, the period prior to that. Looking to the right side, you have two blue columns, and those are the ones that represent the close of business for the entire month for the month of uh, or the last 60 days for the month of March and the month of February. So looking at this, 2,406, it's, it's okay. It's not not quite enough, but it's okay. But it's okay because look to the right in that salmon last year, same period. Not that last year makes a big deal of difference, but we had a great year last year. Uh, in fact, the best on record. And of course, this year is looking to be the same way, but we only took 2,000 uh, listings the same week last year. We took 2,400 this week. So you know what? Even though you know we, we have to give credit where credit's due, <laughs> and, and right now it's right there in the inventory. Uh, taking a look at the, uh, let's see, go down one more slide. Taking a look at the active inventory again, that 5,558 is, is comprised of 765 coming soon properties, 5,275 single family detached properties, new homes represent about 427. So the entire non-distressed inventory are bringing in at 5,529. So if you look to the left, way over in the left-hand column, you'll see that what percentage of the entire inventory uh, these ranges make up. Um, so we've got about 14, 13, 14% of the entire inventory is coming soon. And that's really, yeah, they seem to be selling and coming soon and not really yeah. coming out. Looking at uh, the uh, short, you know, we always were trying to protect everybody from thinking there's going to be a big bust happening. So again, we take a look at what's happening in the de-stressed market, which is uh, what these uh, gray boxes represent. Taking a look at pending, we're sitting at 90, uh, 5982. That's 5,982 people of sitting in escrow have made an agreement with a seller. Last week, we were at 6,071, uh, 4,500 last year. So, you know, this is green because, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people in the marketplace right now, uh, a significant amount, and we're starting to see that it's, this is the new, in, the, the new pending numbers are sitting somewhere between 5,500 and 6,000 versus 4,500 a year ago. Taking a look at closed for the month, uh, we're sitting at 5,216, 4,110 last year. You know, we're 36% right now ahead, or is it 20? I'm sorry, 26% ahead of uh, last year as far as the closings are concerned month to date. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what that pen, uh, ends up being at the end of the month. Taking a look at the month's supply, like we talked about before, it's just about a half a month supply, just over. Uh, it seems to be common, and that's okay because as we talked about, you know, what we're doing is we're replacing the inventory we're eating so or consuming. So, you know, of that 5,500, it's not really ebb and flowing, but it's not as much of a crisis as we all make it out to be. Yes, it's limited inventory, end of story. But when you take into consideration that we're 
30 to 40 percent in some instances higher than we were in 2019 as far as sales closings are concerned that means we're pushing out that many more homes than we did two years ago and of course last year we're 20 percent ahead of last year 15 to 20 percent so again what there's a silver lining the silver lining is we're selling a heck of a lot more homes than we did before the difference is we're just not it, because that 2400 new listing number isn't over and above that to maintain it in that you know, 15,000, 20,000 MLS listings, we're going to have to have a couple of months where we're just, you know, or a year even where we're really at that 25 or 30, uh, uh, 2,500 or 3,000 new listings number. And until we get there, we're not going to see an increase in, in inventory. But the silver lining is we're replacing enough inventory that that 5,500 is staying right there and ebbing up just a little bit. So that's a, a good sign. Uh, sale prices, again, we have to take a look at that 507. It's up 20 per 10%, 11% over last year, but 20, excuse me, last week. Uh, and, and it's obviously just, that's the point in time number. So don't get a little upset or concerned when you see, oh my gosh, the prices went up 10% this month. I'm going to increase the list price on my property 10%. You can't do that. That's not what this says. Taking a look at the list price, the sale price retention. Yes, we're staying over 100% now. We talked about this over the last two years. When this number stays over 100%, we're seeing that there is definitely a pressure put on sale prices. Um, and so obviously uh, that's the number and the reason for that being that number. Ooh. So, Whoa. yeah, this is a lot Whoa. of data. So I'm not going to ask everybody to try to figure out where I'm at on this, except I did put a little bar in. <laughs> so what this did is I told you guys I was going to look back and I was going to take a look at exactly what price ranges are having the biggest changes, the biggest issues. And so uh, this does reflect the last three years, 2019, 2020, 2021. <laughs> I actually went all the way back to 2013 in this report, So, uh, but this is all I've, I'm showing you because this is really where the changes are, obviously, over the last couple of years, and it's what's most important. In the center column that is uh, an amber or I guess it would be maybe a, a bright yellow-orange color uh, is the projections for this year. So uh, what I've done is I've taken last quarter's numbers, and then I've uh, just extrapolated a typical algorithm in there to say, okay, at the end of the year, what's it going to look like? So if everything remains the same based on, and it should, uh, the different differences in price appreciations over time. First thing I want you to look at is the red boxes. Find the big red box, the little red boxes. There's only two. One's in 2020 uh, saying that this is the change from 2020 to 2019, from 2019. And then of course, to the left, the amber is saying, hey, here's what we're anticipating this looking like at the end of, of this year. It, it, the red box describes a decline in unit sales. The green boxes all express an increase in unit sales. So every single category from 200 or from 300,000 and up, when we're looking at the gray column in the center, every single category above $300,000 had an increased closings. Now look at the percentage of the increases. You'll see it's, it's rather dramatic. Um, now, one of the other things, if we take a look at the uh, colors, there's a green color, uh, a green filled box and a blue filled box. The green filled boxes were those changes that were in excess of 100%. So in other words, look where that happened, all between a million and, a, and $5 million. That's where the greatest increases in new prop. Now, it was easy to do that because there's fewer. It's like dollar trading stocks. If you can buy a dollar stock, you get a much like a likely chance of getting a 100% increase than you do if you buy a $500 stock. Uh, but in this particular case, if you look at the green, these are all the markets. Now, if you look at the blue, the blue represent, you know, the ones that were between 50 and 100%. Um, so you're talking about one and a half times the volume that we've had previously. And look where that's sitting, all between um, uh, 500,000 and a million 800,000. So this is the hottest part of our market is between 550,000 or 500,000 and the 1.8 million dollar price range. Um, you can go back in here afterwards if you want uh, and and see and you know blow it up and take a little closer look but this is just what I, I wanted to show you this silver lining because the fact is we're just so into this oh my gosh the the inventory is depressed I have to ask for more money and this is the problem. The inventory is not depressed. 
So that's why you're, you know, realistically, the reason we're seeing an increase in price is because we have people coming from California that just don't understand our market and they, or other parts of the country, and they don't understand the market and they're willing to pay more because it just seems cheap. It seems inexpensive here to buy a home. What they bought for 1,600 square feet there, close to a million dollars, they can buy close to a 3,800 square foot home here. So again, they're, they're just willing to pay these numbers. And, and so sure, sellers and everybody's taking advantage, but this is why there's not going to be a huge reset crisis coming down the road when the market resets because it's really not. And if we continue to allude to consumers that they have the right to drive these prices up, we're setting ourselves up for that reset two to three years from today. So again, this is not, we're not really in a depressed inventory scenario because we're finding enough inventory to fulfill over 30%, 30 to 50% more buyers buying, not interested, buying, closing in the marketplace than we have at any other time before. So that's the uh, market stats today. Uh, you can find us on Alexa Flash Briefings, Instagram TV, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. And if you'd like to see the total narration with the slides, look at youtube.com, uh, West USA Realty. Thanks, everybody. All right.